Oh oh. Uh oh. Oh oh. Because <laughs> I had told him, I'm like, don't retire. I'm going to miss those guys. <laughs> but, um, That's the hardest part. It really is. You know, we have so many funny stories to tell about the fire department. I remember when we um, lived behind UPS, um, <laughs> Mark was chasing me around the house with a snake. <laughs> 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 I found a snake oh, on the oak tree, and I ran inside, and I shut the door, and I said, I'm going to call the fire department and tell them to come kill the snake. He said, no, you won't. I said, oh, yes.
I, I believe that I believe that, that uh, God puts two kind of people in your life. On, you know, on a, on a daily basis, He He, he, he uh, makes these people cross your path. He puts the guy in your path that um, that teaches you how not to be. In other words, it's the guy that you say, "Thanks, God, for, for sending him along the way." You know, and I don't want to be like that guy. But then he puts another one in your path that's a mentor. And uh, those I'll forever be grateful for. There's several of them in this room that have been mentors to me in the fire service and in family in general. And uh, so for that, I, I say, you know, I appreciate it. I, I, you know, to, to preserve and call names because, you know, in fear I may leave somebody out. But uh, you know who you are. And, uh, and I just I appreciate that I really do because um, I've been blessed beyond measure to have the mentors that I have that's put me in the position that I'm in now. Um, I hate that the guys from Station Four aren't here because uh, a lot of those guys down there um, basically mentored me. I have people that come up to me and say, "Man, you've done a great job." down there with that with that group of guys which is and I always have to correct them. That's not true. Because really they're the ones that's done a great job on uh, seeing about me. They really have. Uh, and I hate that they're not here. But um so Gail maybe Horace is back will be a lot better from now on since I'm gone. <laughs> you won't be told me anymore. <laughs> you know uh, Cooley's back, you know, Cooley, he had to get his back fixed because I think I broke it, him told me so much. Now. <laughs> but, uh, but anyhow, so well, I do appreciate that. But there's a couple things that we that we uh, tried to do at Station 4, and this is mainly for the guys in blue. Um, one thing is, one thing that we tried to do down there is we tried to always, I shouldn't say always, but most of the time, we try to, because, you know, all these runs we go on, a lot of them get very monotonous, very mundane. And so one thing that we talk about and we try to keep reminding ourselves about is, you know what? It's not an emergency to us <clears throat> most of the time because we go and see it and do it all day, every day. But to that person that called 911, it is their true emergency. Mm -hmm. And so we need to remember that. And I'm not saying that you guys, I'm not, not making any intuitions that you don't. But intuition, but but I'm just saying that we just that, that's something that we had to constantly remind ourselves of. It, it is their mercy, and, and we need to treat it as so. Uh, the next thing that we had to that we worked on was don't take this blue uniform for granted. Um, you weren't you just didn't happen up in this uniform. You're put here for a reason, and. That reason, in, in my mind, is something that God did, okay? Um, so, yes, we go out here and make these calls, and, and, we, and we take care of the patients, but, and, and that's, that's kind of like, that's making a paycheck, but if you want to make him, make him proud, make him happy, then take that one step further. Did you get that? That Ricky, is that you? It, but but take that, but really take that one step further, and, uh, and and not to say that we did it all the time, but as I grew in my profession, I realized that this was true. Um, we would get out in in our territory, and would when we seen the need, we would take care of that need. Now I'm not saying you got to go do that. You, you find your own niche on how you go about doing that. We found ours down there, and I hope that they carry that on, and I'm pretty sure they will, because most of them are the ones that mentored me into doing it. But, um, so, you know, that's it. Just, just don't take this blue uniform for granted. You're seen out there in the public as a, as a, a true leader and a hero. And so use that BRT. Use that big red truck. Get out there and... And when you see the need in your community, in your section of town, to uh, to help folks out in their time of need, and you guys are more than capable of doing that. Because I think that if you don't do that when the need arises, that the Lord has a way of taking those things away from you. So uh, just, just keep that in mind. You know, we all know that we're we're one mistake away from it being our house on fire. We're one breath. 
We're one heartbeat away from being the ones on that stretcher looking up instead of somebody looking down. So that's it. Just keep that in mind. It's it. There's only one other thing I want to say. Now I'll, I'll let somebody else roast me. To maybe <laughs> um, if something were to happen to me, this is how I think of you guys. I think you guys as a family. And, and I don't take that lightly. So if something were to happen to me and you see my wife or kids out, I expect y'all to get, go give them a hug. Yeah. They'll know that's coming from me. Yeah. And that's it. I appreciate it. <clears throat>